Hello to all my wonderful viewers of Mana TV International. I'm your host, Kalindi, and I'm back again with another episode of Healthy Life, The Vegan Way, partnering with World Vegan Vision, who harbors a vision to be healthy, to be kind, to be vegan, and be human. Let's deep dive into what World Vegan Vision's uh, dream is all about. And with our guest today, Dr. Shrenik Shah, a humanitarian and advocate of veganism, a practicing physician in internal medicine, and a vegan of 20 plus years. He's a firm believer and follower of whole food plant-based diet. He strongly recommends vegan lifestyle to prevent disease and lead a very healthy lifestyle. And our other esteemed guest, Dr. Moise Kasubai, is an associate chair of medicine in an academic medical center with a passionate interest in plant-based nutrition to prevent and reverse chronic medical conditions. He is also a physician advisor to healthcare technology companies and another great advocate of plant-based diet. Let's welcome Dr. Shanik Shah again and our guest, Dr. Moise Kasubai. And today we will discuss how to reverse heart disease with a plant-based diet. Welcome Dr. Shah and Dr. Kasubai to the show. So Dr. Uh, Kasubai, let's talk about uh, heart disease. Uh, can, you, can we start with uh, what is heart disease? The basic question. Absolutely. So I think people understand what heart disease is, but there are sort of four components to that. One is that the blood vessels that supply the heart, which can get blocked and cause a heart attack. Then you can have weak muscle, which can cause heart failure. Then you can have problems with the heart muscles and the conduction system of the heart, which can cause sort of abnormal rhythms of the heart. And then of course you have the valves. They can be leaky valves or they can be valves which are very narrowed, et cetera. Now, plant-based nutrition, majority of the research has been done on heart attacks, which is what are you talking about? The atherosclerosis, the, uh, the blood vessels supplying the heart when they get narrowed. And a, a bit about even the heart failure, the muscles getting weak and the reversal of that. Now, you may know this or not, but every 42 seconds, somebody in the world is dying of heart, heart attacks. And it is now the leading cause of that. But 100 years ago, we did not hear of heart attacks. And in many places around the world right now, including say Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, heart attacks are very rare. So what happened? Well. As they say, it's the leading cause of that. But what is the real leading cause, the actual cause of that? And the first one, of course, all of us are very, are very well aware about is smoking. Smoking kills. Has it decreased? Great. Has it declined? Very much. And it has actually caused a much less of a disease burden. Next is poor nutrition. And that's what me and Dr. Shah will talk about, how nutrition, the choices that you make on a daily basis, morning, afternoon, evening, can help prevent, reverse, and actually treat many of the chronic diseases. Uh, I would like Dr. Shah to give a few words. Well, I mean, heart disease is a major, uh, major issue there uh, because uh, right now the focus of uh, cardiovascular disease is in treatment. And you're talking about bypass surgeries and angioplasties and things like that. But sometimes that is itself has its own side effects. There are failed angioplasties, there are failed bypass surgeries. There is a relative risk in doing the surgeries and doing the procedures like angioplasties. People die while doing those procedures. These are what I call iatrogenic deaths. So this is on top of all the burden that we are really carrying with billions and billions of dollars we're spending. Nobody, nobody is talking about prevention. It is about high time to really we get the prevention in our hands because an ounce, uh, a ounce of prevention is worth better than pound of cure. In countries like Uganda, Africa, it, was, it is very unheard of, or it's very less compared to the other countries, right? So it, this is more of a Western or more of a developed country disease, right? And why do you think it is more in other countries, in more developed countries? So, Colin, these chronic diseases that we talk of right now, the hypertension, the heart disease, the strokes, the cancer, they call them chronic diseases. But these are actually foodborne diseases. And that's how we're supposed to look at them as foodborne diseases. What has happened, our intake of cheese, our intake of meat has tremendously gone up. 
Right. Access of meat, the access of dairy, the access of uh, any sort of these animal products, as we call it, was very less 100, 100 years ago. But now because of technology, technology has actually harmed us. Food technology is one of the reasons why we are dying at, with heart attacks, with cancer, et cetera, really. You know, the beauty of this is this can be so like the disease, especially heart disease we are talking about, most of it can be reversed, right? And, and Dr. Shah, you have been practicing for 35 years and you have preached something to your patients, right? It's been a wonderful journey, like I mentioned in my last talk, that animals are the, really the only source of cholesterol in our diet. Okay, there are some familial, familial hyperlipidemia, which can be genetics, but those are very, very few and far in between. 99% uh, of the people who have a cholesterol is all diet related. So as Dr. Moyes said that the plant-based diet is really the answer because that way you're reducing your cholesterol burden in, in, your, in your heart and all, all throughout the blood supply. And the coronary arteries uh, are, get clogged uh, by the, the sticky LDL cholesterols and all that. And this plaque also, there has been a lot of uh, further research into that there is a lot of inflammation and this inflammation can break the plaque and the plaque goes down further down the stream, block the small arteries and all that. But even in that, the inflammation is also augmented by the animal foods and the plant-based right. diet has been found to be reducing the inflammation. So again, there is a plant-based diet comes out standing out as a winner. Really, that is the way. We have had a lot of uh, talk, you know, there were some studies by Dr. Dean Ornish, I'm sure uh, Dr. Moise would agree that he's the first one who really showed a small study, 28 people, but he showed a reversal. N none of the statins that you actually give, they are, can only prevent the further disease, yes, to some extent, of course. Right. But the Dean Ornish study, from California actually showed the reduction, the reversal of the blockages, which was fantastic. So he's the one who recommended the plant-based diet to Clinton, uh, our president, who had a bypass surgery, and then he was in Haiti giving out a lecture, and he was flown back to DC because he was having chest pain. They had to do another angioplasty, but he's the one, Dr. Dean Ornish was the one who called Clinton, Bill Clinton, that you have to do this. And Clinton is vegan now, he's totally vegan, and he's enjoying, he lost a lot of weight, and he's enjoying, uh, and his arteries actually opened up more than what he was before. So it's really a wonderful thing, so, you know. How does, like, you know, we've talked about cholesterol um, with, with Dr. Shah, um, and, that, and, you know, how fiber helps reduce cholesterol. Uh, Dr. Kasubai, how do you think that plant-based diet improves heart health in general, or, uh, you know, reverses heart disease, or improves the quality of life? Um, so, right. So Dr. Shah did mention, and he talked excellent about fiber. It's all about fiber, fiber, and cholesterol, which is coming from saturated fats. Now, when you, we know certain reasons why you can get increased atherosclerosis, that is hardening and thickening of the arteries because you eat meat. One of them is something called an insulin-like growth factor. It's a hormone. You have meat, it increases it. This causes increased amount of cellular production. It also causes increased cancer. Now, we all know that we have cancer. All of us have a little bit of cancer in our body. And if you have meat, it actually stimulates the growth of this cancer. Secondly, meat has certain chemicals inside that. When it is ingested and the bacteria in the intestine act on it, it releases another chemical, which causes inflammation of the, art of the endothelium. Now, endothelium is the thin cell wall around the uh, arteries, and it causes inflammation, hence it causes more stickiness, it causes more plaques, and hence it can rupture and cause you to have a heart attack, really. Thirdly, again, meat and dairy products have a lot of phosphorus. Now, phosphorus is a one, another, it actually stimulates something called fibroblasts, which actually cause a thickening of the muscle wall of the heart. And more the thicker the muscle wall is, the more likely you get heart failure, more likely you get heart disease. Thirdly, there's also a lot of heme iron. Now, there are two types of iron. There's heme iron coming from meat and dairy products, and then there is a non-heme iron coming from plant-based. Now, heme iron also causes inflammation. Now, sulfur is there present in meat. It is a little acidic. And when we ingest meat, we become a little acidic overall. Now, how does the body neutralize that? It actually takes calcium from the bones. 
So you're actually getting, your bones are getting weaker when you eat meat. And, and it has been proven that dairy product, dairy, uh, uh, more the dairy products you have, more likely to get fractures of the spine and of the hip too. So, you know, you have this sort of advertisement coming around, have milk, get strong bones. It's completely wrong. And Dr. Shah, please add on. Well, uh, also this, uh, this molecule that you were talking about is very interesting that I, I found that the TMAO uh, is a transmethyl uh, nitric oxide is production actually. So this is caused only when the bacteria which ingest the, the meat products, this TMAO is absent in the plant-based diet because plant-based diet does not have a bacteria that will produce the TMAO. So you made a make good point that because they say that, okay, cholesterol is not the only thing. There are other markers that can cause. So TMAO has been found. So like you said, is definitely uh, the cause. Uh, so plant-based diet helps you all the stages of preventing the heart disease. So it's, uh, there has been large study, have been almost 200,000 people study has been done where they divided 100,000, 100,000. And then one, they let them eat the animal products and all that, another 100,000, they said, no, that you cannot have any animal products. And their risk of heart attack went down by 12%. And in that 100,000, they divided 50-50. Uh, one, they told them to eat only whole grain, whole food plus plant-based diet, no concentrated sweets, no concentrated sugars and carbohydrates, concentrated carbs and all that. They went down by another 7%, so total 19%. But in the plant-based diet, they also said that if you eat too much carbohydrates, sweets and all that, sugary drinks, soda and candies and all that, then actually it goes up by 10%. So again, so the studies have definitely showed that abstinence of the animal foods have significantly lowered the heart disease. In that subgroup, of course, we can talk about it in further lectures later on, how to deal with all those situations. But I absolutely agree uh, that uh, it's absolutely must to really, it's about time that the world has to turn vegan. You talked a little bit about uh, uh, dairy, uh, right? And often the question arises because we are so brainwashed with, uh, you know, early on that dairy is very essential for, the, uh, you know, for infants, for children, for, you know, strong bones. There's always, people always think when you're, when you talk about quitting dairy, what about my calcium? What about my, um, you know, vitamin D? Um, you know, what about all the nutrition that comes from dairy? Like, uh, Dr. Shah, what do you, uh, you know? Well, we have you... realized that because uh, the atmosphere that we grow up in is what creates us, unfortunately. And if you really look at the global picture, 70% of the world does not consume dairy at all. Go to Okinawa, uh, the whole Japan has no cows. China never had any cows for 5,000 years until it got westernized and then the cows started getting in and the cheese came in. And even in Japan, the you know, big cities and Shanghai and in China and all that are changing because of the cosmopolitan lifestyle. The Western diet has not remained Western anymore. It's becoming Eastern also. So uh, India, for sure, because we have ethnic background and, the, and that's how the religious background and all that has been around. In the old days, I would say, yes, uh, the milk was necessity because grain production was very poor and we had to give something nutritious to our children. So milk was a lifesaver because we already had cows plowing the fields and things like that. So, and they said, oh, the cow is giving milk. So half of that they will give to the calf other half will give it to the children. So that's why they treat uh, as their mother and rightfully so, because without the cows, civilization yeah. probably would not have survived. But now there are no cows in the, in the fields, you know, there are tractors. So now we're questioning what is the role of milk anymore? And who really drinks milk as a nutrition? Most of the people eat the ch cheese, and yeah. cheese and candies and all that for pleasure. So it has become a pleasure item because of the manipulation by the food industry. So we really have to think that milk is not that essential. If you go to China, uh, Tibet, I mean, the, the, the Taiwan and Korea and Vietnam, they drink black tea. But if you tell, try telling that to Indian people to drink the chai without milk, it's impossibility. So we really need to broaden our horizon and realize that milk is a killer. Dairy is scary. <laughs> And the risks, you know, uh, talking about heart disease, 
uh, what what are the you know in both of your practices you've seen this for years so what are the main um, risk factors I understand meat is one of the you know com- higher consumption of meat higher consumption of animal products higher cholesterol levels seen in patients that but besides that what are the risk factors for heart disease so the risk factors that we know and uh, i can tell you that what what's been studied with plant based right we know diabetes is a risk factor it's a huge risk factor you become whole plant based you reduce the diabetes risk by 30% okay by one third eliminated if you take more of whole plant based food means more plant based we don't really have studies where you use only whole plant but you use more plant based you reduce hypertension that is a typical dash diet that we used to talk about before so these are two major risk factors and if you take plant based you reduce two to risk factors and you're going to reduce also heart disease along with that i know we keep talking about whole food plant based but uh, dr shah you have been a practicing whole food plant based um, diet for you know over uh, 12 years right so yeah. can you just briefly talk about what exactly is whole food plant based cuz in today's day and age with the whole uh, you know the expansion of plant based industry there is like uh, plant based this plant based that so what exactly is whole food plant based and why is it healthy and especially for heart health why is it healthy in heart disease well like we i just said earlier in that study uh, in the 200000 people study where they divided the veganism is of course uh, all coming from the plants so no animal source which is fine but even in that if you eat a lot of concentrated carbohydrates and sweets and things like that so to oil that you can fry and all those things those things are avoided yeah, right. those things are avoided in mm-hmm. your plant-based diet so there no frying and no sugary intakes and things like that that's where the major jump comes in your health i have had patients even if they change uh, to whole food plant-based diet just for breakfast and lunch and they kept the dinner the same even they have lost 12 15 pounds in a matter of 2 3 months so it's the raw food that really i mean minimally cooked is fine no problem uh, but the whole grains instead of the regular grains and all those things are very important and like dr moy said fiber is absolutely important the risk factors for heart disease are many like we know uh, diabetes high cholesterol hypertension smoking obesity but look at the whole thing i mean by barring the smoking everything else is ultimately comes down to diet right. as dr right. moy said diet 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 and as they say we are what we eat right correct exactly and so diet is in our hands really uh, nobody's going to come and i mean if you you go up on the diet then the doctors are of course there right. uh, eat you because that's their job but if you really do the plant based diet you will not need uh, doctors you know like you go to okinawa japan people live 105 110 years old they never seen a the doctor they never have there is no heart disease there you go to uh, uh, papua new guinea in the centers where uh-huh. the cities are not developed no heart disease uh, Dr. Esselstyn's one lecture I listen, you know, he says that if you are a cardiologist and you go and put up a, a sign there, you're a cardiologist, you'll be out of business <laughs> because there is no heart disease. That shows dramatic example that the diet is a lot to do with it, and we don't want to be victims of the external situation. Our health is in our hands. Uh, if you really compare the Western philosophy. you talk the name of western treatment is medicine medicine means you have to have a disease first so we can right, right. But on the east we talking about ayurveda yeah do you know what is the meaning of ayurveda ayu means life veda means science it's a science of life whatever it takes to extend your life that was no commercial aspect at that time so prevention was taught on a regular basis as a part of ayurveda so people believed it and our rishi munis and all that they lived to be 100 plus years easily so there is something to the lifestyle that we really have to go back and learn despite all this spoiling and corruption and the you know this thing has happened in our diet because of the western lifestyle we don't want to be the guinea pigs of the food industry you know and it's the, the there is a billion dollar food industry waiting to get you and you know it is in their interest and then there is pharmaceutical industry again it's yes. in their interest to feed you drugs so yes eventually you have to be your own you know you have to advocate for yourself and look you know look at the research around you right look at the scientific research talk you know look at all the 
data that's now, you know, at least now it's everything is pointing towards plant-based diet, right? In the whole food plant-based diet, you're going to lose a lot of weight and you have to be ready for it because you will lose it. All you have to do is make a commitment. And right. once you lose weight, every 10 pounds you lose, you're increasing your lifespan by two and a half years. And I have people 60, 70 pounds weight loss they can easily do. You're talking about 15, 20 years extra in life. And it's not just the years. Healthy years. Healthy, yes. It's the quality of life. The, the yeah, quality. Of I have patients who come in and I say, why does he have problems? And why don't I have problems? <laughs> so it's a matter of lifestyle because you just eat healthy food. You never have to worry about anything. Our job is to really lift ourselves higher in life so that our body has to be taken care of first. So if you go on this permanent change in your lifestyle, your body will become less important then you can work on the mind and reach to the higher state. Uh, if you want to help your children, which is your duty, if somebody eats the wrong food and dies at the, with a heart attack at the age of 46, you're really neglecting your children. That's against your dharma. Dharma says you have to be the best father possible. Mm -hmm. One of the duties, right? And if you're missing that and die at the age of 46, and I have patients who died. I had one guy, he wanted to have higher pizza every day. He died at 46. His wife never worked because he's had a beautiful IT job. And now that he was gone. So then his wife and two girls, they were pretty much, you know, devastated because the wife had to go back to work and the children pretty much grew up on the street because why mother wasn't home. They got into all problems, drugs and all those things. So because of one person's wrong eating habits, it destroyed the whole family. So everybody has to wake up. Really, this is time to change the diet. What do you say, Dr. Moise? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's a lot of diets out there. Uh, yeah. There's a paleo diet. Where... People have a lot of choices, so people should know. I agree. Exactly. So, so some of the choices I must say, there's a paleo diet where they say, hey, this is what we were eating 50,000, 100,000 years ago. Yeah. Cut the carbs down. But you cut the carbs down, you cut the fiber. Fiber is what makes you healthier, right? Then there's a keto diet where have 80% fat in that. And when you have fat, there's no carbohydrates. Apparently, you cause more ketosis and you burn the fat for energy because there's no carbohydrates and you lose weight. Great. You lose weight in the first one year. Maybe you want to get married. You want to go out to the beach. Oh, <laughs> you're keto diet for a short while. No long-term studies. No, it's, long -term. Not, it's not a sustainable. It's not a long-term sustainable. Exactly. And the point here is plant-based nutrition is the only one with randomized controlled trials, longitudinal studies. So there's no other diet which has research backing it. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, we are both physicians. Colin is a neuroscientist. She knows and we know that without research, we cannot really, we answer questions by doing research. Then only, only research has been done is it been plant-based, which is showing it's really beneficial. And, you know, the keto diet was basically used, was to be used only for refractory seizures. Yes. If you're having fits, you're having seizures, keto diet was supposed to use that was 100 years ago. Hopefully it goes away and we have to spread the word that eating good food is actually helpful to you as a human being, is helpful for the animals and ultimately helpful for the world. I mean, there's no other diet that can put all three sure. together you the animals and the whole whole planet together so this is the one beautiful diet that we are we are sharing around and we really really want all of uh, all of you to benefit from it and i'll give an example on the diet i have a beautiful example one spanish girl she married an indian guy and uh, she came to me for a physical her cholesterol was high and, and i explained to her so we went on a plant-based diet and cholesterol came down very well i didn't see her for about a couple of years and all of a sudden she showed up and uh, her cholesterol was high again. I said, well, did you go off the plant-based diet? Or, uh, he says, no, I went on a keto diet. <laughs> I said, what do you do in keto diet? Well, I eat uh, uh, all this bacon and eggs and all the meat. I said, well, you're eating cholesterol. No wonder your cholesterol would be high. So I said, really think. So she went back on a plant-based diet and she was okay. So, so it requires some discipline. I agree. It's a change. And it doesn't have to be an overnight change either. Uh, it can start slowly, one meal at a time and all that. But Ultimately, that is the, the salvation for the whole world, actually. And it, is, it is the most sustainable of all the diets, right? And a diet, Absolutely. as uh, uh, Dr. Kasvai said, it's a diet that brings in but, harmony, yes. you know, you're in harmony with yourself and with the universe. Right. I've been on right? the diet for 10 I feel wonderful. I yeah. feel 
Oh, great. So one more quick thing about this. And, uh, you know, we are talking about being advocates for this diet. And, we had, you know, if you cannot change, change a little bit. And there is a beautiful study saying you have to make 3%, only 3% change in your calories. Take 3% of your animal protein out and put plant-based protein. You will see a decline in heart disease. So what we are telling you, if you want, you like meat, you love meat, yes, but have less of it. You know, by having less of it, you're going to save yourself and save the planet. And you know, that's a beautiful thing, really. One meal at a time, right? One meal at a time. Time And anything you change, this diet gives results. That's the beauty of it, right? You can change one meal, you change two meals. And I mean, it's wonderful if you change completely, but even one meal at a time, this diet will give you results. That's something we can say, right? Based on the the plethora of evidence. I had heard a quote from one of the doctors uh, from New York. Uh, he was on with Dr. Esselstyn. He says, we have uh, eaten ourselves into this problem and we're going to eat ourselves out of this problem. I think you, uh, you we, we need to go back 2,500 years ago when Hippocrates, right? He had said that, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Absolutely. You knew it then, 2,500 years ago, we've we have lost the wisdom of our rishis of the Greek and the Roman philosophers. And we need to go back into that and, uh, you know, advocate strongly that uh, food is what is going to change you. It's not the medications, not the doctor's visits, not getting a cardiac cat and all these costly investigations we're doing right now. It's not, it's not sustainable. It's not the whole healthcare system is not sustainable unless we change the nutrition. Absolutely. Because at that time there was no food industry. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And so, yeah, so one of the things that you can do for yourself, yeah, changing the diet, get in the kitchen, get control of your own diet, right? Get control of your own food and be the winner. So I think at, with a beautiful note, we will end today's show and thank Dr. Kazubai and Dr. Shah again for their wonderful insight into reversing heart disease with a plant-based diet. Thank you, friends, once again on our show, Healthy Life, The Vegan Way. Uh, today, we had Dr. Sreeniksha and Dr. Moise Kasubai discussing how to reverse heart disease with plant-based diet. I hope you guys took plenty of notes and you know listened to their talk on how uh, the causes, the reasons heart disease is caused and also how it can be reversed. So until next time, uh, hope steady, live healthy life, vegan way. Thank you, everyone.